Hi and welcome to the WatchGeek Basel World Special. In this video we'll cover Omega. Now this year Omega in celebration of 25 years of the Seamaster 300 has completely revamped the 300 collection. The case, bezel and bracelet shape have stayed the same, but the size has changed so now the Seamaster 300 measures 42 mm in diameter. Also the material of the bezel is now a combination of ceramic and enamel to ensure an everlasting finish. The biggest difference in appearance is the dial that now again features the wave pattern that became the signature of this collection years ago. Although it has been changed quite a bit so it's not the dense wave pattern we're used to but rather laser cut lines that are stretched pretty far away from one another. I personally like it more than the plain dial of the current model but still prefer the older style waves. Another change to the dial is the date window that has now been moved to 6 o'clock to increase symmetry and I love it. What I don't love is that now the Omega logo is no longer applied but printed. The biggest change technically is the switch to a fully built in-house movement and the movement is proudly shown through a transparent case back which is for the first time on this model. The master chronometer caliber 8800 will satisfy even the hardcore watch enthusiasts and put an end to people complaining about the usage of modified ETA movements. I'm sure the price will also reflect this change so those same people will yet again have something to complain about. All the models will be available either on a bracelet or a curved end rubber strap. The next model I'd like to cover is the Speedmaster Dark Side of the Moon Apollo 8. Apollo 8 was the first time the humans went around the moon and saw the dark side of the moon. Now this was on 24th of December of 1968, so Christmas Eve. To me personally, that flight was the bravest thing humankind ever did, as it was basically a test whether all the calculations of moon's gravity and the speed and angle of the spaceship will check out and actually work to make the spaceship return instead of drift away into the darkness of space. Now imagine being strapped in a tiny spaceship with rockets propelling you at speeds over 24,000 miles per hour away from your planet and shooting you into the darkness of space next to another celestial body with only your faith in the physics and mathematics that everything is going to work as it should and that the moon will catch you and not let you drift away. It gives me goosebumps every time when I think about it. So for the 50th anniversary of that brave leap of faith, Omega launched this model with the historical We'll See You on the Other Side, etched on the case back. Although very cool, I wish they also included the Please be informed there's a Santa Claus that Lovell said as they returned from the other side and regained communication with Mission Control. Now just like the other Dark Side Speedmasters, it is completely made of black ceramic but this one has a skeletonized dial and a lunar surface pattern on the face of the watch. The cool thing is that the lunar surface pattern is not done on the dial as the dial is almost completely missing. The lunar surface is actually done on the bridges of the movement itself, which makes the movement itself very unique. This pattern is also done on the bridges on the back side of the movement, which is visible through the transparent case back. The movement is caliber 1869 which is basically the decorated version of the historical 1861. The dial, despite being artistic, if I can call it that, is incredibly legible thanks to the proper color coding, meaning that the main time is clearly separated from the chronograph, as the main time uses white color while all the chronograph data uses yellow. I really like that as it makes it impossible to get confused about what is what. The marker's hands and the whole tachymeter scale is loomed, making the watch come to life in the dark. Another cool detail is the loomed Omega logo on the crown. The watch is more than 44 mm in diameter, making it unfortunately too big for me. So even if I could afford one, despite liking it very much, I would never get one. The final watch I will cover are actually two models, both limited to 1948 pieces as they're commemorative reissues of the first Seamaster from 1948. Back then the Seamasters were looking more like dress watches than dive watches of today and the two models are almost the exact replicas of that look, which makes them cool beyond belief. There is the small seconds version that has very nice leaf hands with the minute hand being 
having a curvature at the end, and a sportier regular three-hand model that even features some loom. Now these watches show that the design of watches from late 40s to late 60s is truly timeless and to be honest, I find these to be one of the best looking watches this year. The only thing working against them is the increased size. Not so much the diameter that is now 38, while the originals were 35, it's the thickness. This is now over 11 millimeters, probably to accommodate the coaxial movement. And that's a problem with many vintage inspired models of today. They all tend to be very thick, while the vintage watches they're inspired by were very thin. And that thinness is one of the things that made them look so good on your wrist. But despite the increased thickness, I would gladly get one if I had the chance. Well, this completes the Omega releases, so thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please like and subscribe. And until the next video, bye.